Hey, I'm Tyler, and this video is an introduction to chemical reactions for the TEAS exam. We'll talk about the basics that you need for the TEAS chemistry section. Now, if you don't have much time to study, this video is all the background that you need to start learning other topics. After this, you can move right on to videos on physical and chemical properties. But if you do have some more time to study, when you're done with this video, you can learn how to do balancing chemical equations and watch that video. It's totally up to you. This video is part of the T's Chemistry Essentials full course. That course covers all the most important chemistry topics that you need to know for the T's. You can see them right here. And in that course, we break the information up in lots of different ways, depending on how much time you have to study, right? So one hour, two hours, four hours a day, a week, so forth, however you slice it. You can find the full course and the study plans at teasinoneday.com. And if you have any questions about the T's or the science section, you can always email me at tyler at teasinoneday.com. I really want to help out however I can. Okay, let's get started with chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are one of the most important things in chemistry. When you imagine a chemist working in a lab, you probably picture chemical reactions. Stuff like you see here in the pictures. A chemist starts with some chemicals, they mix them together, maybe there's a color change or a little bit of fire or something like that, and bam, they end up with something new. And at a really basic level, this is what happens in a chemical reaction. We start with something and we make something new. We usually need to learn a little bit of technical language for the T's. So here is a more accurate way to describe chemical reactions. We can say that in a chemical reaction, substances are transformed into new substances. That's a fancier way of saying you start with something and make something new. So let's look at some examples of substances transforming into new substances. One thing that we see a lot in chemical reactions is elements coming together to form compounds. For instance, here's the element sodium and here's the element chlorine. Now, if you bring sodium and chlorine together in a chemical reaction, they react to form something called sodium chloride, which is another name for table salt. When things combine or change during a chemical reaction, we say that they react. So, in other words, for the reaction that we see here, we could say that sodium and chlorine react to form sodium chloride. Chemical reactions are usually written using symbols and formulas. So, for instance, sodium is Na and chlorine gas is Cl2. Sodium chloride is NaCl. We can write this reaction as a chemical equation. And we get Na plus Cl2 reacts to form NaCl. And this arrow here, this arrow means react. So Na plus Cl2 react to form NaCl. We have a special name for the substances in a chemical reaction. The things you start with are called the reactants. So in this reaction, sodium and chlorine are the reactants. The new substances that are formed are called products. So here, sodium chloride, NaCl, is the product. A good way to remember this is that reactants react and products are produced. Reactants are what you start with, products are what you end up with. Now, the way we've written this chemical equation isn't perfectly accurate. 
to be perfect, we need to add some numbers here. These numbers are added to do something called balancing the equation. I have a whole other video on just that. But we don't need to worry about this right now. In this video, you'll sometimes see numbers like this. Just ignore them and focus instead on the formulas for the reactants and the products. Okay? Let's look at some more examples. Here's another example of a chemical reaction where two elements come together or react to form a compound. Here, we have iron and oxygen gas, and they react together to produce iron 3 oxide, which is commonly known as rust. So, to look at some symbols here, the element iron is Fe, and oxygen gas is O2. And the chemical formula for rust is Fe2O3. Oh, and by the way, the T's would never expect you to just know this formula for rust. That's not something that you need to have memorized. But you should memorize that O2 is the formula for oxygen gas, and you should know that iron has the symbol Fe. Anyway, how would this reaction look in a chemical equation? There you go. Fe plus O2, then we have an arrow, which means react, to form Fe2O3. I'm not going to worry about balancing here, so I'm not going to add any numbers. We're only trying to recognize a chemical reaction here and understand how they're written. Okay? What are the reactants? Iron and oxygen gas, that's what we start with, and rust, Fe2O3, is the product. One more thing to know about chemical reactions. So far, we've seen two reactions where elements react to produce compounds, where they come together. But there are millions of other chemical reactions where all sorts of different things can happen. For example, sometimes compounds break apart into elements. That's what we see here. There's a compound called cinnabar with the formula HGS. When you heat cinnabar, it breaks down into two elements. It breaks down into mercury, which is HG, and sulfur, which is S. So here is this reaction written as a chemical equation. HGS decomposes into mercury and sulfur. Now, I looked at this arrow here and I said decomposes, but you could have said reacts to form, or you could have said breaks down, or whatever gets the point across. That's why a chemical reaction like this can be so useful, because it says all of those different things using symbols. Here's one more reaction. Remember methane or natural gas? When you burn gas on your stove, methane, which is CH4, reacts with oxygen gas, O2. The products are carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and water, H2O. And it also makes a lot of heat. This is a type of reaction called combustion. Combustion is just a fancy word for burning. If you're wondering about these chemical formulas, you don't need to know that methane is CH4, although it wouldn't hurt, but you don't need to know it. But you should know that O2 is for oxygen gas, CO2 is for carbon dioxide, and H2O is for water. Okay, that's all you need to know about the basics of chemical reactions and chemical equations for the T's. Let's wrap up with two practice problems. Okay, choose the reactants in the chemical reaction below. Select all that apply. Well, this is pretty basic, and you'd be lucky to get it on the T's, but it's a good way to review the concepts. You need to remember that in a chemical reaction, reactants form products. So everything on the left side of the arrow over here is a reactant. And that gives us FES2, O2, and H2O, A, B, and C. One more question. This is a little trickier. Let me show you how you tackle it. When calcium carbonate decomposes, the products are calcium oxide and oxygen gas. 
which chemical reaction shows this? Now, I bet you're thinking, how would I ever know the equation for this reaction? And here's the thing. Sometimes a tease is going to give you questions like this. The good news is you usually don't have to know the equation. You can solve them by thinking through the question and eliminating what you know is wrong. So let's look for clues here. You probably don't know the formula for some of these substances, but if you read the question carefully, you know there's only one reactant. Calcium carbonate decomposes and there are two products, calcium oxide and oxygen gas. So one reactant becomes two products. So we are looking for a reaction over here that has one reactant and two products. That means we can immediately cross off choices A and choices D because both of these options have two reactants and one product. So get rid of them. And look, we've already narrowed it down to two options, B and C. At this point, you could randomly guess and still have a 50% chance of getting the question right. So these are not bad odds. Now for the products. Products. We get calcium oxide and oxygen gas. Now, you might not know the formulas right away, but think about this. One of these products is oxygen gas. So think about this. What do you know about oxygen gas? Well, the formula for oxygen gas is O2. In the video on compounds and chemical formulas, I had this list of common chemical formulas that you just got to know for the T's. It's really important to memorize these. And if you remember that oxygen gas is O2, that's all you need here. In B, we have O2, which is correct. But in C, we only have O. And O is not the correct formula for oxygen gas. So we can cross off C, and choice B is the only answer that fits what we know. You didn't really need to know that calcium carbonate is CaCO3, uh, and that calcium oxide is CaO. It helps, of course, but we got the right answer by just thinking the question through. So, that's it for our introduction to chemical reactions. If you don't have much time to study, you can move right on to other topics. Or if you do have more time to study, you can move on to balancing chemical equations and check out that video. Now, if you like these videos, if you like how I teach, you can find the Tease Chemistry Essentials full course at teasinone It covers all of these topics, and there are study plans based on the amount of time that you have to study. So, questions, comments, you can always send me email at tyler at teasinone Best of luck on the tease.